Welcome to the Tech Mind Factory video blog. I'm super excited that you visited my channel. I hope you will find this video helpful and interesting. If so, please subscribe at the end because this will be the sign for me to produce more videos. And now, enjoy watching. This is another video from the series Be a Better Azure Developer. And in this short video, I would like to briefly talk about building event-driven solutions with Azure Functions and Azure Cosmos DB. And as always, let's start with some theory and then we will jump into the demo. So what is event-driven architecture style? To make it simple, an event-driven architecture consists of event producers, so those who produce, generate a stream of events, and then on the other side, there are consumers, so those who listen for these events and can take up some actions. And it's worth to mention also some scenarios where there is an event-driven architecture applied. So for instance, in the online shopping website, we would like to send an email notification once the customer completes a purchase. So in this case, this is the scenario for event-driven architecture. Or if we have a smart home solution, for instance, and we would like to uh, have an alert once the temperature increased. So this is also something related with events. So when the temperature is too high, we receiving an alert. And uh, another scenario can be like customer reserve a seat on the cinema website. So once the, this seat is reserved, we would like to receive an email confirmation, for instance. So there are many different scenarios where we can use events and we can react for those events. Now, when it comes to Azure and Azure Cosmos DB, in this case, there is a helpful and interesting feature that helps building event-driven solutions. It's called Change Feed. And let me briefly describe what it is. So in the Azure Cosmos DB, as you probably know, we can have different containers. And inside those different containers, we can store data. So we can have like a product container, customer container, we can have product tags container, some different containers. And inside those containers, we have the data that is related with our application. And right now, when there is a change in one of those containers, so let's say that there is a new order uh, in the sales order uh, container, we can react to this change. So for instance, once there is a new uh, sales order placed, we can call Azure function or we can send notification using Azure Notification Hub. Or we can pass this information for processing like using Azure Stream Analytics. Or we can move the data from one container to the second one. So for instance, we can move a file from, from one container on Azure storage account to different uh, container on the Azure Blob storage. So this is really interesting feature. And specifically in this video, we are going to talk how to use uh, Azure Cosmos DB change feed together with Azure functions. And in this specific scenario, what will happen is the fact that we have a product category container and once uh, the data is changed, so once th this product category is updated, there will be an event emitted in the change feed and then we will update this category name in the related products. So this is really powerful feature and also it's really easy to use. So now let's jump into the demo and let's see how to use Azure Cosmos DB change feed together with Azure Functions. Let's start from the Azure portal. And here is the data explorer for my Azure Cosmos DB account. And as we can see here, I have four different containers. I got customer container, leases, product and product category. And right now what will happen in the product category container, I have two different items. So let's see them. I have the first item, the name is bikes and the type is category. And of course there is a second one, the name is set to cars and is also type category. 
And right now, when we open product container and items, we can see that each product has category assigned. So we can see the category ID and we can see the category name. And of course, we can see in this case that we have a giant bike. It's a mountain bike. And we can see that there is category assigned to bikes. And, we, and if we open another product, we can see that there is a BMW car and the category ID is also assigned and the category name is set to cars. And right now, what we will try to do, we would like to uh, update this category name in the product once the category name is changed in the product category containers. So just to clarify, if we change for instance, the name here in for this specific category from cars to car, we would like to also have this update in the products where the category is set to cars. So let's see how to do it. So right now I will jump into the Visual Studio and let's describe what's happening in the Azure Function source code. Here it is, Visual Studio 2019 and Change Fe Functions project that I created for this video. And we can see that I have one class, it's called Update Product Category. And inside this class, I define one function, Update Product Category. And we can also see that there is Cosmos Client uh, instance used because we will use this Cosmos Client instance to update all the products where a specific category has changed. So let's briefly discuss what's happening in the run async method. So we can see that there is Cosmos DB trigger used because in this case we will use uh, Cosmos DB together with Azure functions. So when there is a change in one of the containers in the Azure Cosmos DB, this function will be triggered. And also we have to provide some parameters like database name, collection name, so in this case product category, and there are also uh, three additional parameters. Connection string setting, so this is the connection string to my Azure Cosmos DB account. There is also a list collection name and another parameter, create list collection if not exists. And right now let me briefly discuss what is this list collection. When talking about change feed in Azure Cosmos DB, it's worth to mention about change fee processor. And the change fee processor is a part of Azure Cosmos DB SDK. And it simplifies the process of reading the change feed and distribute the event processing across multiple consumers effectively. And there are a few components of change fee processor. So the monitor container. So the monitor container has the data from which the change feed is generated. So any inserts and updates to the monitor container are reflected in the change feed of the container. There is also the lease container, and this is what we see here in this declaration. So the lease container acts as a state storage and coordinates processing the change feed across multiple workers. The lease container can be stored in the same account as the monitor container or in a separate account. Then we have also a host. A host is an application instance that uses the change fee processor to listen for changes. So in this case, the host in our case is an Azure function. And then we have the delegate. And the delegate is the code that defines what we as developers want to do with each batch of changes that the change fee processor reads. And we can also see that in run async method, we have two parameters. I read only list that contains document that were either changed or added. And we have also iLogger for logging. So now let's discuss what's happening inside this function. So first of all, we have to check whether documents are not null. So the list does not exist and there are more than zero documents. If yes, if, if this condition is met, we can log information that there were a number of documents modified. And then what is happening here for each document, we can, we can uh, deserialize this document. So in this case, I have product category. So we can see that I'm deserializing this document to product category class. 
And then what I can get, I can get category ID and category name. And then I have to call update products async with product category ID and product category name. And of course, I will attach logger for this one. So then let's see what's happening in the update products async method. Inside this method, what I can, what I am doing here, uh, first of all, I have to get the reference to the container that contains products. So that is why I have this short method called get container. And inside this get container method, I'm just getting the reference to the product container. And please note that here I'm using the latest version of the Azure Cosmos DB SDK for .NET and it's currently in preview. So once I have container, I can create a query. So in this query, what I'm doing, I'm selecting all the products from the product container where category ID equals this past product category ID. And then what is happening here I'm creating the iterator and I'm using move next async inside the while loop and I'm iterating through all the products and for each product I'm updating the category name. So once again if I scroll up we can see here that we, we are waiting for the changes in a product category collection and once product category name is changed, we would like to update this product category name in the, each product that is assigned to this product category. So if I scroll down to update products async method, then uh, we can see that there is entity that category name uh, called and we are assigning pro new product category name. And then, of course, we have to call container.replaceItemAsync. So we have to update this uh, product with the new category name. So I'm doing this in this line. And again, this is the new version of the Azure Cosmos DB SDK. And currently it's in a preview, but it works here. And of course, below, I have also catch block. So if there is an issue with updating those products, I would like to log this information. And of course, at the end, we have to dispose iterator. Okay, great. So now let's launch this update products category function app and let's see it in action. So I will launch it right now. And after a few seconds, we should see information that the Azure function is running. Perfect. So right now, uh, our Azure Function app is running. So we can go to the Azure portal and we can update one of the categories and we can try to see whether the product uh, was updated. So this is the Azure portal once again, and we can see that in the product container, we have a giant bike. And this bike has a category name, bikes. And right now, what we will try to check is whether this bikes category will be updated when we update this product category in the product category container. So let's open product category items. And here we can see that we have this category called bikes. So let's update this category from bikes to mountain bikes like this and we can click update. Now if we open the console, uh, we will see that there is an update uh, in our Azure function and there is information that one document was modified. So right now, let's jump to the products again and now we can try to refresh this specific bike. Right now we can see that category name is assigned to bikes, but let me refresh this item and right now we can see that category name is assigned to mountain bikes. So this update was applied. So now let's do it once again and let's jump into the source code of the Azure function. What I did, I just set the category name again to be bikes, not mountain bikes, but bikes. 
and we can see that I added a few breakpoints in the Visual Studio. So right now we can see that there is one document updated. We can see that the category name is set to bikes. And if we go further, we will see that there is one document modified and then what we can do, we can go through each documents that were updated. So in this case, one document. And what's happening here, we can get product category and we can see that product category uh, has a name set to bikes. Again, there is an ID, of course, assigned. So then what we can do, we can get this product category ID and get the product category name. And then we can call update products async. And now what will happen, update products async is hit. And we can see that Right now, we're getting a reference to the product container. The query is created. We are also creating the iterator. And right now, we can get all the products where this specific product category is used. So let's see it. We can see that there is one entity. We can see that this is the giant bike and we can see the old category name. So mountain bikes. So if we step over, we will see that we updated category name to be bikes and then we have to call replace item async. And after that, this product has right now the new category name, so bikes again. So if we get back to the Azure portal, we will notice that category name is set to bikes right now. And this is only a simple example how to use change feed with Azure Cosmos DB and Azure Functions, but you can read more in the official documentation. And all the links, all the helpful links will be available in the video description. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and helpful. If you have any additional questions, please do not hesitate to contact me either on Twitter or LinkedIn. And of course, I encourage you to visit my blog, techmindfactory.com. See you in the next video.